Hey, how's it going? I want to put a video on quick on how I made my fishing with a super magnet, uh, the actual magnet, due to people writing and asking about it, how I did it, or if other magnets will work and that. So I thought I'm going to take the time quick because chances are I'm going to be doing this a little bit more and stuff like that. It's kind of entertaining. So I already started taking the pla uh, electrical tape off this, but before I get started, I want to show you. I started out using a 2x2x1 two by two by inch N52 grade magnet and these things are, I'm just going to tell you right now, they're very dangerous if you have never messed with them. So much so, I would consider recommending whoever has these, just consider them, them being alive. They, uh, and what I mean alive is, I guess, they're alive and they're pissed off and you treat them that way and you won't have as many problems you get careless with these you're going to pinch fingers and trust me i've done it at first and i've actually had both these two come together and it took forever to get these apart they're i don't know what the pull is on them i don't really care i just know that they're nothing to play with going with that i started out um i used the electrical extension cord holder you buy that from walmart or Menards or somewhere for a couple bucks. It seemed to work the best and then a fairly thick cord You know you can use whatever you want, but I don't use plastic because this seems to give a little bit better than that And it does uh, hold up pretty good in the water. I mean like the it's more bendable But like I said use anything you want other than probably metal going past that the actual build of My housing for the magnet. I cut my electrical tape already and took it off now keep in mind the magnet's dirty, so I'm not going to sit and clean it up. And we'll start from square one. And I'm not going to take it apart because it took forever to put this damn thing together by myself, believe it or not, because these magnets are so strong, it's hard to get everything straight. I do believe I got a two-inch U-bolt, is square U-bolts, is what I found from the hardware store. And... Just buy two of them, and I got them probably all oh, long enough so you can hook stuff to it. Just say six inches long. And these plates here, I do believe, are for like uh, wood cabinets and that. And they're probably two inches, I do believe. I know the holes were a little bit too far in to uh, use them. So I put it on a drill press and drilled the holes out farther so they'd fit over this uh, two-inch bolt. And I bought two bolts, U-bolts, and then four of them uh, plates from the hardware store. And like I said, I think them are used basically for just bolting wood together and whatnot. And once I did that, I got the, once I got the U-bolts set in the way I wanted, I dropped the plate down over. Actually, this is a longer one it looks like, but not too bad. Both these are longer, so... You just have to govern whatever size you want. Drop them over, drop one over, drop the other one over, and put nuts on there to where I caught the threads. I don't want to get this thing too close to the camera because I guarantee it's going to shut off. Got it down to where I can run a nut down and thread it, secure it real tight. And then for the upper part, as you can see there, all it is is two of them plates and a nut underneath to hold it and then put nuts on top and once I got that built I uh, just take a great big giant um, clip or you can pick up at the hardware store for not too much and even if you look it even makes that magnetic like big time and just took it and clip it over I now whether if you want to put duct tape or uh, electrical tape around it or not or stuff I'd recommend doing it on account of keeping anything from the ability to catch in there like a big rock or something and then you're gonna really be struggling getting it out but that's the design I come up with and it's simple I'm sure there's probably a lot better than that it does tend to work suit my needs and works real good and I've tried other designs and this seems to be the best now for the big one why do you why would I you know, spend $35, $40 on a N52 grade magnet and pop, we'll see. Did you see that guy? He's starting to get pissed at him. 
and I got within 10 inches. Once them things come together, you're done. Um, dumb idea to have that one out. I'm going to go put this back. They were being bad. Trust me, I, uh, I've had some pretty harrowing experiences with them. So, But anyways, let's get back. I'm going to slide this over a little bit. And we're going to start out. This right here, if you can see it, is a uh, um, stony meteorite that I use on my metal detecting videos where I test metal detectors. Uh, most of them can't pick that up. This fell in Wisconsin. I actually never did find one, so I had to buy one off the guys, the meteorite men on the Discovery Channel, and I paid pretty good money for it. I'm going to turn it into a ring someday, but I had people ask if, hey, can you use a speaker magnet? Well, this is a fairly big speaker magnet. Um, will it hit that stony meteorite no so we'll try to move up say like this horseshoe got a hole in it be a simple thing I mean you're sure you're gonna pick metal up with it trust me but uh, will that pick that up not a and then to move up to a I think this is a hundred pound pull magnet with the thing and everything on it I bought this at Harbor Freight or not very expensive and how they work is you got a magnet in there you know basically strengthening this pole here but if you're set it to the side drag it along even straight on you're not going to pick that magnet up and or I picked that uh, meteorite up this here is a welder's magnet with angles it's pretty strong same thing you're not going to do it but if you take this super magnet that's alive and run it along I mean it picks it up pretty easy as long as it touches the magnet it does it so I want to give you a little bit better taste of how strong they are these are some actual pliers that I pulled out of the water on one of my ventures set that down. I'm going to keep this back just a little bit. And if you could somehow fasten a speaker magnet, you know, if you were going along, you'd pick it up. Not too bad, you know. Actually, it doesn't look terrible, but you're not going to pull a tremendous amount of weight with it. Same with the horseshoe. Pull that off. Works pretty good on that. Now, the little bit larger one. You can see it picks them up. I'm not even going to do the um, welding magnet. Let's move on to the super magnet. If this is going along in the water, if you notice, does a pretty good job and just picture that that uh, pliers under I'm making a mess pictured in pliers underwater and I'm probably about five inches above it right now and say them pliers were buried a little bit in the sand I mean they're You can see the force of it. And then the last one, let's, uh, I want to lose my bearing here. Let's use this old pie tin just for the hell of it. If you hit directly on somehow, you pick it up. The little horseshoe, pretty good. No matter where you hit it, it will, but it's, uh, this big one and they say uh, I don't like this was rated at like a hundred pounds pull that's not a hundred pounds and we'll move to the big one
a little bit different there. So, there you go with the uh, super magnet for fishing. That's uh, what I did. If you still have questions, go ahead and write. I'll try to answer them. But if you want the ultimate uh, portable magnet to go magnet fishing with, I wouldn't recommend messing with the cheaper ones. They're just not going to pull stuff from that's two inches down under in the sand and whatnot. It, you're not going to get them. And if you want to go any bigger than this, I really I don't think you, you want to because... I've come close to, I think, pulling the limit on this rope, which I, one thing I forgot to um, let you know, how you fasten it is huge too. If you notice, I've tied it a few times and doubled it over right here. And the reason why I did that was because one, I don't want that being the weakest link on anything is usually the knot, unless you're a real good knot tire. But these ropes will do like what you're seeing here they end up opening knots open up so I took a uh, cable tie and just put it on there and that gives me the added security to know this rope's gonna have to literally break before I lose that say 30 to 50 dollar magnet or whatever but so there you go with what I did to build it and I'll be putting another one on where I actually caught a fishing reel this time. So pretty good, uh, pretty fun and pretty entertaining unless you have a wife like mine that thinks you're a nerd and doing that instead of actual fishing while she's fishing for cats. So well, there you go, fishing with a super magnet, how to build. <laughs>